Hey all, it's Aurelius, happy to be well. In this tutorial, we're gonna run through Google AI Studio. Specifically, I'm gonna run through Stream Real Time. It's a feature that I see potentially that could be very useful if you run a business, if you're learning to do things online, if you're wanting to research, analyze, all that, because right there, you can do things like talk to Gemini using natural language and just as you would if you were to talk with a friend of yours and they understand all that which is like nlp so natural language processing you can also show gemini what you are looking at or what you want the ai to explain so this will further enhance uh, your basically your research or whatever it is that you're doing you can also share your screen which is quite useful so if you're trying to create something let's say on canva and you're not familiar with how it all works you can simply ask google or in this case gemini live how do i do this or that and then it will tell you exactly what you need to click on so let's get on to the tutorial so you can get started with google ai studio First things first, you're going to need a Google account. Most of you probably already have a Google account. So once you've done that, head to the link down below. You should head to aistudio.google.com and then you'll see this right here. There's a, there's a prompt at the moment which will ask you, do you want to use AI, uh, Google AI Studio? You can try Gemini or you can build with the Gemini. So you can completely disregard this because you're not into development and things like that. For you, you just want to experiment with it. So click on try Gemini. Okay, once you're in, you'll see on the left side, stream real time. Since this tutorial is mainly or predominantly is going to be talking about stream real time, that's what I'll be talking about. Okay, so we're going to click on stream real time and you'll see a couple of options. You may not see show Gemini because you will need to enable your webcam and it will automatically detect whether you have a webcam or not. All you need to do is just allow permissions and access on your browser to access your webcam and then you are set. Same goes for your mic as well and your screen. First thing we're gonna run through is talking with Gemini. Really simple, it's kind of like conversational. If you've ever tried ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, it works just like that. Uh, in this case, we are going to click on talk to Gemini. It will now connect to server. Now it is streaming. With Google AI Studio, you do get 10 minutes of live streaming, which is basically like talking with Gemini live. And as I'm talking now, it's actually listening to me. It won't make sense to the AI voice, but uh, let's start by just talking with uh, Gemini, right? Hey, Gemini, what's the, when did AI start? When did it, when was it first established or known? The speaker is demonstrating a live stream with Google AI Studio and is asking Gemini when AI started. Do you want me to answer that question? Yes. All right. The concept of artificial intelligence has been around for a while, but the field really started to take off in the 1950s with the Dartmouth Workshop. Would you like to know more about that? No, thanks. Okay. Is there any? And that's it. Like I've disconnected it, closed the conversation. But as you, as you heard, I did kind of talk uh, with you. Uh, at the same time, I did, ask, I did ask a question later on. So it still understood how, what I was trying to achieve. In the practical scenario, really, you could run this in the background. So you can click on Talk to Gemini, let it run streaming. And then as you're kind of working, doing whatever you're doing, uh, you can just talk with Gemini just as you would with something like uh, Alexa or you could use uh, Siri, similar to that. But we are on the desktop at the moment. So whatever you're working on, whatever facts, figures, perhaps you need to uh, know for your research as a, an example, you can do so using Gemini. So the talk to Gemini is quite self-explanatory. You're not really showing anything on screen. You're not showing anything on camera. You're just simply using your microphone. Now, the next thing is showing Gemini what you're looking at so that you can, I guess, start a conversation about it, talk more about it. Let's just go ahead. We'll click on show Gemini. Let it start. Here's my webcam. As you can see, we're going to ask Gemini, what is this? Hey, Gemini, what exactly am I holding at the moment? The man in the video is holding a cell phone with a transparent case. The Apple logo is visible in the middle of the back of the phone. Is there anything else you would like to know about this video? 
As you can see, it did detect quite accurately what exactly that object was. The response is quite descriptive and accurate and goes into quite a lot of detail. Let me show you another example. So we're going to this time show our Sandis. Oh. Hey, Gemini, what is this? The man in the video is holding up a dark colored SanDisk portable solid state drive. Is there anything else you'd like to know about the item? Again, it's described it quite well, dark colored uh, SanDisk portable solid state drive. It detects the logo. So if there's anything unfamiliar, let's say you want to show, let's say a flower that you picked out and you're wanting to know exactly what kind of flower that is, what type of flower that is, you can just hold it up show Gemini what it is, and then it will try its best to explain or even detect what that flower is. And then we've got share your screen, which could perhaps be the most useful for you whenever you are working on something on your computer. So what we're going to do is share our screen and then select the window that you want to share, or you can share your entire screen. If there's an external app that you want to show, let's say Photoshop, Premiere, or whatever you're trying to use. We're going to click on this one for now. Click on share. Wait for it to stream live. And okay, I'll wait for it to stream I'm live. To, oops, is there anything else in the background now? But let's go ahead. What I want to do is create a wedding invitation, for instance, in Canva. So, hey, Gemini, how do I create a wedding invitation on Canva? I'm currently on the Canva homepage. What do I do? Okay, you want to create a wedding invitation on Canva, and you're currently on the Canva homepage. Have you already created a Canva account, or do you still need to create one? Yes, I've created a Canva account. Okay, you have already created a Canva account. To create a wedding invitation, you can start by clicking on the Create a Design button located on the top left side of the screen. Would you like me to walk you through the next steps after that? Yes, please. Okay. After you've clicked Create a Design, a menu appears. In the menu, you can see different options for the type of design you want to create. Since you want to make a wedding invitation, you could use the search bar and type Wedding Invitation to see if Canva has pre-made templates. Do you see that option? Yes, I've searched it. Now what? Now you can choose from the options that appear, such as Wedding Invitation 5x7 in. Which template do you want to select? I'll choose the wedding invitation landscape. Okay, you've chosen the wedding invitation landscape template. Now Canva should open a new page where you can start customizing your design. Do you want me to continue guiding you with the next steps? Yes, how do I add a template to the design? Sure, now you're on the design page, you can see various templates on the left. To add a template, Simply click on the template you like, and it will automatically be added to your design. Which template do you want to add? All right, and as you saw, quite interesting, right? It's able to help you and guide you every step of the way. Even though you've never used a particular app, it will do its best to explain uh, where, where certain things are, where certain toolbars are and options. The only thing that is kind of lacking, in my opinion, which I think will be a feature or cool feature in the future, is actually highlighting certain options that it's actually talking about that it's focusing on so if it's talking about choose a design from the design option like where is that like it could be anywhere but for the novice you know they could get really lost instead it should just kind of highlight or like box around it and that would be a cool feature but otherwise i think this is a cool <laughs> feature that google ai studio has added as you can see with the conversation history, this is these are all the clips that we've recorded and the responses from Gemini. Also on the right toolbar, you can choose the model. We've got the latest right now, and it's just the one, uh, the 2.0 Flash Experimental. You can also choose the Apple format, audio or text, and also choosing from a list of voiceovers right here. So as you saw, pretty useful with what Google AI Studio can do for you. You can talk with Gemini in a conversational tone, say with showing Gemini something on your webcam or your camera, also showing what's on your screen, guiding you every step of the process. Many practical ways that you can use this, which I can also see myself using. It's not perfect, of course, with that 10 minute limitation of live streaming. And there is also a limit with creating prompts and chatting, just like you would with ChatGPT. So we can't really complain because Google is offering this for free. I think over time, they will hopefully increase the minutes that you can do live streaming. But otherwise, I think this is a good thing to give a try at least. 
But at the end of the day, what are your thoughts on Google AI Studio, specifically the stream real-time feature and option? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Do stick around to watch these videos next.